Alright, welcome back! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls to Honcast here, we got Haunter Season 3 Playoff Action coming at you on what is the final match of Group A. We will know which is going to be the second team to be going out of uh, the Group A to the Final Four. Of course, Fresh, they won yesterday against, uh, against Willow Keeper, two games to one. They are the number one seed as a result. Here we got Willow Keeper versus now Coolio grinding through the losers bracket to get to this point. And they are going to be contesting to try to claim that number two seed. Of course, this is a rematch of these, these two teams meeting up in what was the first round back over on Tuesday. Willow Keeper won that match, but it wasn't easy. They did take it two games to one in the end, but Coolio definitely giving them a run for the money there. And only have had that much more time to now develop as a team. Again, what is somewhat still a new team for the most part. So it's going to be interesting to see how now this plays out. I'm joined by Minnie once again. Minnie, how's it going? Hey, man. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward to this series as well because uh, it's going to be crazy. Like, I think either these teams have not, almost potentially not making it to, to Thailand. It's, it's kind of big, obviously. Like, you know, more probably so for Tree, obviously, because they've had such a long, pretty good sort of whole season three, practically, of Honsol season three. And then, obviously, you've got great players for um, Coolio as well, most notably, like, Super KG. And, and sort of either seeing one of those teams sort of fall today is, uh, is going to be a big deal, honestly. So I'm, I'm yeah. looking forward to sort of see the climax of, of today. Yeah, that's a really good point. I mean, we are at the we are at that stage now where you know, obviously, a couple of teams have already been eliminated. Their season's officially over. Looking at the brackets real quickly uh, before we develop into the draft here. Of course, you had Don't Care, uh, Solar Club, and Night Raid have all been knocked out at this point. Uh, and it's now these two teams are left. One more team is going to be knocked out. Again, and knowing that, sure, you know, Coolio, despite them being a newer team, uh, they do have the stars of the players. They point out Super KG definitely being the big one. A couple other players that have been around the scene for a while. This could be the end of the road for them as far as Haunter Season 3 goes. Uh, but it also could be for Willow Keeper. Again, which Willow Keeper team are we going to see today? I think we just constantly go back to... And we're going to find out shortly here in game number one. Now, with that said, we got, of course, the bands picking off right here. So let's start talking about uh, the initial bands, at least. It was Ophelia, Swift Blade, Silhouette, Dr. Repulsor. Nothing really crazy there. Um, of course, Silhouette being banned by Tree, even again, giving some respect to Marcus Moy. Deadwood, the first pick, actually. Deadwood into Magmus, Kinesis into Kraken, and then Andromeda into Impact. Yeah. I really like the Andromeda pick actually coming up from, from Fusen because, I mean, if you remember actually the, the last game uh, between Tree and Fresh, I, I honestly think that the Andromeda was the, the big factor in the difference between why uh, Fresh actually won the matchup. So I was thinking, oh yeah, this here is actually quite good. And in this matchup particularly as well, it's going to be very useful. He's playing against a Kraken, so when most likely, when, when Tree do run their sort of their strategy, they have like a hard carry and they always have like a full protect one. And having the Andromeda there to sort of save him out and bail him out is very useful in team fights because if if um, if Coolio do somehow burst down the you know battles off for whatever reason, you know, they could win the team fight just off of that. But with Andromeda there, you know, you can swap him out, particularly good against Kraken, obviously Kraken most likely will try and focus down the carry with uh, all of his sort of combo of the, the, the charge into the ultimate. So Andros, they're going to be useful there just to swap them out as like a fail safe or safety net. So. Yeah. Well, there you nice. go there. The second tier of fans now starting up. Engineer into Puppet Master so far. Uh, coming out here. Of course, uh, you see Coolio taking away a Puppet Master option from Balthazar, but a player that uh, is known to play many of different kind of carries, so the worst case scenario for them. But uh, yeah, definitely interesting to see the value again of the Kinesis over here for Tree. Again, Boxy has been playing Kinesis quite a bit. Not a big surprise there. Tremble Band coming out again. Seen him left open this long. But Tree does not want to give that up to this Coolio team here. So there's Clanks back and forth on the carry bands now, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised like, he banned out Tremble, though, because Marcus doesn't play Tremble, or maybe that's just a little um, unresearched sort of fact. So I'm like, sort of similar. So I guess, I mean, he doesn't play Valkyrie either, but they, they played it in that last series. He didn't do too well, to be fair, but um, I guess just banned out any potential options. Or perhaps, you know, they just don't want to play against it because it might um, almost counteract the sort of game plan that, that Tree have got going into it. See Tempest Band coming out there. And now the final one to be happening from Coolio, and then 
into the next year of Picks We Go. Again, these two teams, they met up on this last Tuesday, a little less than a week now. But, so, you know, part of me is almost like Coolio, it's almost a, a blessing in disguise in a sense that they, they got a couple of matches here that they sure had to win to get to this point. But, again, so, somewhat of a newer team, especially Super KG, joining their ranks and trying to mesh that team together. A little more practice before they once again now get this rematch against Tree. So uh, they've, had, they've had some time now, and... Uh, of course, uh, they had to do, do three games, or what? Did they go three games in their first round? No, they, they won both of these loser back matchups, two games to nothing, but still, point being, uh, you know, they had to definitely work for it. So, uh, But there's that Valkyrie pickup coming up from Tree. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Curse was banned last, so <laughs> we're not going to see the Accursed Valkyrie combo, but. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering whether. I'm, I'm pretty sure they normally run Valkyrie as the Swiss. I know Battlezar has played it a little bit, but um, relying like just on Battlezar to be your main carry on a, a Valkyrie, I mean, it's, it's a little much to ask. So I'm assuming that's going to be the Suicide Valkyrie, and then they're going to run Kinesis as the second support or Root of Z's hero. And this will most likely be Battlezar's um, hero as well, uh, I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, they picked up Ravenor actually for, for Marcus, and I mean, I think. They, we've Revenor seen a lot of play, but more for so from the sort of lesser teams like Solaire Club and um, and uh, what was the other team that was in the bracket, or was it just Solaire Club? Uh, for what losers like, bracket? Yeah, uh, yeah I think it was just Solaire Club. The, yeah. Oh no, you don't care. Yeah, don't yeah, care, yeah. I think, yeah. I, don't, I think don't care and Solaire Club both picked up Revenor. We haven't seen too much out of the um, the higher uh, skilled teams or higher skilled cap teams, but picking up here for <clears throat> but they pick up Behemoth instead. Then so. Uh, how are they go? I guess they're gonna run. Uh, how are they running this then? Are they running offlane behemoth? No, again, they they're not running up just yet. They're gonna be waiting to keep uh, Coolio guessing here. I don't want to give them 100% of information, but I, I assume it's gonna yeah, be Kinesis. Yeah. Yeah. So they are gonna rely this all on the, the carry Valkyrie then, which is a little bit surprising though. Um, because I mean, Valkyrie can carry, but normally it's not one of those like hard, like if you've got to rely all your physical presence on one carry, like it doesn't scream Valkyrie to me. Like you, you're no. thinking of like Dark Lady, you're thinking of like more the hard carries, but um, they pick it up here. I mean, they do have a lot of early game bursts, and I think they're going to have to take that advantage going into this game. Um, because, I mean, although you know, Cooley don't have the quote-unquote hard carry, they do have a Ravenor that I think can scale very well into the late game, likewise with Kraken as well. So, Tree are going to have to do a lot of heavy lifting the, you know, the early laning stage, the early, you know, early game, the first 15 minutes. You know, they have so much damage and a lot of kill potential. So, yeah, it should be a most likely an action-packed game from the start. Yeah, you, you do see right there that Parasite final pick coming out, so... Uh, good for them that the hero was obviously left open to that point, and they figured, hey, might as well go to the Parasite here, get that jungle option taken care of, and uh, confident that it can work. So, yeah, almost like matching up against what's definitely going to be an aggressive playstyle of Tree here earlier on, as that, that's just tense how they, how, they how they usually run. Now, I want, really want to go back to Balthazar playing this Valkyrie again. It, it really seems like whenever they do do this, we, it, it, it's funky. It just seems like it's just not his style of hero, and, and yeah. he usually just doesn't work, honestly, in the end. So a little concerned already for Tree that uh, they, they almost, uh, I mean, it's almost like they were trying to, you know, they picked up Valkyrie after a curse was banned, so it's not like they were trying to get away with that by any means. They just simply, uh. they, they consciously chose to make Valkyrie their carry with that fourth pick right there. Uh, there's no doubt about that, so we'll see how it works out for them. I think they're going to run an aggressive trial lane though because they can't run their solo short um, trial lane because Valkyrie can't really jungle like level 5, like unlikely like, Clanks for example, even like a Dr. Repulsa. So they're going to have to run aggressive trial lane most likely, um, shut down the Ravenous farm early on and they're facing a Parasite as well in the jungle so I think they will be able to get away with it. Um, this does lead obviously Deadwood and, and Kinesis to have two solo lanes as well so that's what they're most likely going to run here. Um, uh-oh, uh-oh, they're in a lot of trouble. This is big time right here for Coolio. They don't know it yet. Now they do. The line stop perfectly on both heroes. He has the Fidger Stun. It's not going to really do much, though. You see the wall off from Empath, Andromeda, and Behemoth both in a lot of trouble. They're both going to fall. Blow those on a Behemoth. There's the second kill on Andromeda. Uh, wow. I mean, what a start. Not only do they get the two kills, but they even counter-warded right off the bat. And that's why Tree had no... I mean... As it was being counter-warded, you figure that they would have just gone away, but for some reason they insisted on hanging in there, and they were found. <laughs> yep. And that's not what they you tried. Wanted. Yeah, it's like it's almost like what they try to do. Like uh, it's trees. Remember when when Coolio sort of sat in the little? It was it was when they did it. They were hellborn last time, and they they sat at like three down bottom, yes, and they tried yeah. to first blood root of Z, and they did do it. And it's like tree tried to do it this time, but they got caught out and uh, backfired heavily.
Yeah, very good heads up by uh, by Coolio right here to, to make sure to check that at the very least. Again, doing the counter ward early. And, you know, I wonder, it's probably connection too. If, hey, they, they placed a ward aside. They weren't there in the jungle though, so let's just check this cubby over here, make sure that they're not hanging around, and sure enough, they were. So, And then that's got to feel pretty good if you're Coolio at this time uh, to already start off 2 nothing. Who got the Bloodlust kill? It was actually Archie Tiger playing the Parasite, and that's big. I mean, he obviously got the Blood Chalice right off the bat. He's going to have very early boots here at this point, and this will give him some good uh, momentum building off off of it and possibly even helping this top lane quite a bit. What is going to be that trial lane now as Andromeda and Behemoth, of course, make their way up here? So that's run the trial lane with Kinesis. I thought those going to run a trial lane with the Valkyrie, but um, it's still good regardless. Um, but yeah, they just want to shut down Mark's farm before. Um, and like I said before, like Marcus, he's a, he's a great carry player, as we've seen like from, from time and time again, but he does need a good start. If he doesn't get a good start, it does seem to he sort of tilts a little bit. And Revenant was one of those heroes well that you can shut down in lane, um, particularly if you know, the enemy team is running a jungle like in this case. Um, and yeah, so they're doing, they're doing the right thing. They're going to try and win all three lanes, which is definitely possible, but at the same time, this top lane is very risky. It can work and it can backfire. Yeah. Uh, so far, it's, it's doing good. <laughs> it's all gonna it's all gonna rely on Arch Tiger though. Can he make those good rotations? If he can, if he can secure that top lane, then Tree gonna be looking bad. But <clears throat> with the uh, good start, as you said before, you know, Tree might have a harder time than than usual. Well, I mean, there's no doubt in my mind uh, that Arch Tiger has to take advantage of this Bloodlust kill. Of course, again, getting the boots here very very <laughs> shortly. You'll have it after this camp because of that Bloodlust kill. You know, there's a Wild Hunter camp right here on the pole camp. Taking advantage of those creeps and looking to possibly set something up could be very ideal. There's also the Catman champion. You know, not the worst option as well. In fact, there's a couple of Wild Hunter camps here on the here in the Hellborn jungle. So there's absolutely no reason why Arch Tiger shouldn't look to be pretty aggressive here uh, early on in the slanting phase. So we'll keep an eye on that to see if he... <laughs> he's right remake. there. Boxy, uh, a little bit of troll coming out. Hey, let's, let's just remake. It's, you know, it's, well, what, what's two kills right off the bat? That's not a big deal. So, uh, but yeah, as far as the other matchups go, uh, while we're in this pause here, let's take a look at what is going on elsewhere? Of course, Deadwood versus Kraken, both of them pretty hard hitters when it comes to the melee presence here, but Deadwood perhaps just slightly stronger, of course, more consistent with the hard hitting as that splash auto attack has that cooldown. Uh, and then we got the bottom lane, Magnus versus Valkyrie. It's almost like a combo that you expect to see together, but they happen to be going at one, an one another. Uh, Magnus is also suicide. You know, not it really has been a while. It feels like since we've truly seen a Magnus suicide. Honestly, yeah. The last time I used to see Magnus suicide was actually Nullstone and Fuzzstuff used to play Magnus um, offline all the time, and he used to actually dominate. I remember that. But you're right, though. We haven't seen Magnus uh, offline for a while. I think because normally with Magnus, you want to have like a good start. That's why I normally you see him mid, um, or you want to see him early rotations and early roam, which you get from like a secondary support. But and there's been a lot more one v two scenarios in in the short lane. So and Magnus doesn't really fare too well um, against uh, a support in, in when he's getting facing that two lane or dual lane. So that's why normally we don't see him yeah. offline too much. Oh, we got uh, Parasite again hitting level 2 right there. He does uh, purchase the boots, I believe. Yeah, coming out to him. Uh, looks like he's going to take advantage of this camp once again. So not looking to be the most aggressive just yet. Uh, as Behemoth and Andromeda, they are going to now get a ward of sight up here at this top lane to help them get some good information if Parasite's coming over now. So, so much for, for being blind here. That's a little unfortunate as far as uh, that. Also, the Rev Ward, of course, is just out of range. We'll see if they pick up on that or not. Wouldn't be surprised if uh, they figure, oh, something's up. Of course, seeing the Ward of Sight on Andromeda, then not seeing it. Pretty much good information that, well, it was placed, just a matter of where. They're going to collapse on a behemoth right here. I don't think anything's going to come of it, though. It has that fissure stun, uh, so should be fine. Going to use it right here just in case, but just going to waste a little bit of time chasing him down, putting in some auto attacks. I, they're really chasing right here. They want to get a wall off from Empath. I, I just don't think it's going to happen, though. Yeah, just too far, and I feel like he's using a lot of time where he could just continue to farm, honestly. So, not much coming out of it. Yeah, just, you, you know, hope for, for Coolio's sake that they really take advantage of the start that they have here. And going back to that Parasite specifically, but uh, looking at the other lanes here, about two minutes in, let's take a closer look. Valkyrie actually took us a good pressure from Magnus in the meantime, but uh, also dishing it out herself. Uh, speaking of that, Valkyrie 9-5, and five, Magnus 7-1, and one, so managing some, but Valkyrie is leading there. 
Uh, and then Deadwood 15 Ooh, four Kinesis. against Kraken 11 and 0. At the top leg, Kinesis stays smash in the air, trying to stay alive. Not going to happen, though. He does go down, so sure enough, Parasite is uh, going to assist right here with that Catman champion. The stun with the essence leak. Parasite, though, I don't know about that, man. Yeah, you dove a little too far. Oh, he <laughs> loses hack on the tower. Does it at falling. Ravener gets killed on Andromeda. And Behemoth, does he have mana? No, he does not. Ravener is going to survive. So double tap for Adro, actually. Uh, playing the Empath out there in the end. Yeah. Really good rotation from Arch Tiger. Talks about how he needs to get active. He needs to make sure he secures that top lane. And, and with those two kills, he kind of does do that. Um, but, it, it, you know, if they're, if they're still staying top, he still needs to have a presence in this lane. Um, just one gank is not enough. I think he should really not try and focus too much in the middle lane. Super KG is doing fine as well. Um, he's losing a little bit on CS, but not too big of a deal. Um, but he just needs to secure uh, top lane, get farm onto the Ravnor, and make sure this top lane is not doing too much. And, Oh, oh misclick yeah, from that. Boxy. That's, uh, I, I don't know. I don't if, he, think if he got Ravener, the, the Comma Stone was coming I, too. I don't think, it was, I think he just didn't have the range on Revenor, so he tried to get the stun off on the creep nearest okay. to him. So. Close right there, but no cigar. Middle lane, dead way to uh, take some pressure from Kraken, but going to be fine. Because both these heroes pretty threatening when they hit once they hit level 6, so we'll see who gets there first and if they're able to take advantage of it or not. Right now, dead with a little bit less life uh, for the time being. Does get his bottle, though, and Going to heal up, of course, as a result of it. So, But, uh, yeah, very good rotation for Parasite. Speaking of that, he's coming to the middle lane with the Wild Hunter. They're looking for a kill. No level 6 needed. They say, ooh, Torrent right there. But Archie Tiger wasn't really happy with the positioning. Instead, going to go for the regenerate. and he destroys it right before Behemoth can get there to pick it up. I mean, Kraken did have a bottle. They maybe could have coordinated that a little better. But, uh, again, they were clearly on a, a different page in the end. So... Super KG and Archer Tiger right there. Back to the top lane. This lane positioning constantly se does seem to be pushed up. And making yeah, it pretty difficult Kinesis for Ravener. The, Kinesis, you, you can, you're never going to have lane control against Kinesis. Similar to when you're playing against a Plague Rider. Because he can just um, manipulate the creep wave too much. Yeah. <coughs> Very true. Definitely helps him in that suicide roll again. In this case being the aggressor in the trial lane. And... You know, Boxy is 300 gold per minute. Sure, he died early on, but uh, he does have the one assist here. And, you know, his Creep Farm, 25 and 6. He's doing much better than Ravener when it yeah. comes to that. It's it's just because, obviously, um, Parasite cannot sit in the lane. Because, obviously, he's got to keep on farming, for example. And and because of that, Ravener can simply not go out for, the, uh, for a Creep. Because otherwise, you know, the, the triple stun combo will happen and he'll just feed, kind of thing. Um, Ravener just literally has to get last hits with Hatchet and farm the pool camp. Yeah. That's what I'm doing now. Man, Super KG wants Deadwood to jump him right here, but uh, and I wonder if he's making it a little too obvious. Crack A. Uh, crack is going up. There's the opening. Leech comes out, but not the biggest follow up, though. Uh, they just a little bit too quick for Crack A right there. By Crack A, I should say. And uh, Crack In is unable to follow up with the charge or release the Kraken for that matter. So Deadwood playing just safe enough, and the Roamers unable to capitalize on it. Well put in there right now. The top one, I mean, they know that at least Parasite's not, not up here or wasn't up here for a little bit, but it's obviously pushed all the way to the tower, so not too much they can do for the time being. Behemoth and Andromeda, though, are managing some decent levels here. They are level 3 at least. Could be worse. But I don't think they've done enough in this front end. They need to secure kills. They're getting good farm, but here's the talk I'm talking about. Yeah, they're they're going to try here. Comma's done perfect timing right as the right Stasis Smash <laughs> ended it, yeah. All right, then. <laughs> yeah, no so chance. That's what they need to do, though, because, like, although Rev um, Revenor was sort of shut down somewhat in terms of farming and, and Boxy was doing good uh, just in terms of last hits, they need to make sure that they secure the skills because it, the supports, although they're, they're an okay level, they really need to get their, their farm just from the farm and their gold from just kill, kill, from kills. Devil got a little lucky there. He actually was going for Rune Control. Empath got a first. He threw out a rot and grasped to get Empath. Ended up missing. Kraken then came in for some counterplay, but as the Rotten Grasp was just ending, Kraken ran into it and actually stalled it for like a half a second, and that proved to be a difference maker in helping Deadwood get away right there. So a little bit lucky, but uh, also just well played, you know, with that Rotten Grasp and making sure to stay alive in the end. So good job for him. But, yeah, back to this top lane. I mean, of course, Ravener back up here now, continuing to farm. Well, will they get something again here? You, you got Behemoth and Andromeda looking like they're ready to go once again. Oh, I, I thought that was going to be an opportunity, honestly. I mean, Empath is kind of here, but I don't know if there's much you can do, to be honest. Uh, throw out a wall, all, but a lot of range coming all out. That, all that is needed is a Fisher Block. Yeah. <clears throat> if he gets Fisher Block, he's dead regardless. Like, doesn't matter. 
That's not bad. Yeah, I don't know why Behemoth isn't actually playing more in the jungle with that said. He should. He, he, that's how he got the kill. Yeah. Firstly, I think he should definitely be more positioned. I don't know why the players so passive here. I think here. they could be scared of Parasite rotation. True. I guess that's probably the only thing that they're pretty scared of. But <clears throat> yeah, they are blind right now, so <laughs> you got to take that in consideration as a spectator. It's like, well, why are the planes so passive? Well, yeah, their mind Parasite's constantly nearby. Uh, in this case, he is now. He only has a Vulture Lord here, so not the most threatening creep, and uh, is going to farm with it at least for the time being. But yeah, understandable that maybe why they're a little scared. But uh, yeah, no doubt. I mean, they got a lot of kill potential as we saw earlier when they finally came through with it. So I'm just getting that finished on off. It's like right now, even <laughs> it just feels like they got so many opportunities to try it. There we go. There's a finish done, and again, this should be a kill. There's no reason for Raven to get out of here. Stays to smash out, throw the burst. Oh, he pulls oh! away from it. What a juke from Ravener. Boxy was not prepared for that. In comes the release of Kraken. Ravener chasing down Boxy. In the meantime, Behemoth is going to get bursted down. No, he throws out a finish stun. He's going to be fine. Andromeda is the one taken oh. out. And actually, Devil comes in to clean up on a Kraken. Magnus has another stun in one second, though. Is he going to hit it right here? Maybe get Behemoth as well? No, they will go for Deadwood as Parasite and him trying to do so. Kinesis, by the way, he was picked off during this time. Deadwood, Rotten Grass, but not going to land. And now he's in trouble himself. Leech comes out, chasing him down. Ball lighting is going to connect. And down oh, goes Kraken. What a juke yes. from Ravener. What a play from Volkos, man. That <laughs> Even though I'd like to flame him time and time again, but uh, that was a really nice play there from, from Marcus. It's complete dodge, obviously, because the Canisius ultimate is, is actually area of effect target base, so obviously you can't just sort of single target them. So when he moves out of the area, it takes no damage, and uh, that all just made that massive turn. And now Tree are... A little bit of a bad situation right now. They've got a lot of early game rotations and a lot of early game damage, but then they're, they're just not winning the laning stage, which should not happen. Honestly, they've got this dual support running lineup that just hasn't been able to secure enough kills, and this is a little bit of a problem right now because they've got two level fours compared to a level six and a level five empath um, for Coolio, um, and not only that, but just. I don't know, they've got only a Valkyrie to really secure their late game, and yeah. is that enough? I just, I, well, don't feel, I don't feel it and is. Is it just me, or is Valkyrie's farm is really low? Especially for being, you know, the, the player that's playing at Belchester, you've seen so much farm on him, and it's been a 1v1. Magmus hasn't even been roaming a little bit every now and then. We saw the top lane, Valkyrie wasn't up there. It's just, it feels like it should be, honestly, a lot better. So something's going yep. on here that uh, it's just not working. And they try a Valkyrie Prism gank with that set, and that is unsuccessful. Um, as Parasite is nearby, they are the ones that need to be careful, actually. You see the Invis Parasite here. With that Veiled Rot, will they find somebody? And the Behemoth off to the side. They're going to go for Valkyrie. There's a stunning face side going to be coming out. Eruption on top. That should be a kill, and it will be. And it's not going to get better for Balthazar in the time being. Yeah, something. I, I mean, I don't know. I guess it's maybe it's just Magmus outplaying him. I don't know, but... I mean, Valkyrie it does have kind of low base damage, to be fair. All his TP's coming in bottom. As uh, Andromeda barely ports there in time, so they're going to be swapping up. It looks like even. Yeah, I think they they need to as well because they need to secure farm on Balazar. He's the, <laughs> oh my god. The port in into death, never a fun thing. Good job though by Magnus and Paris. I realizing that. And now Kinesis finally comes down here, but uh, couldn't get there in time, obviously. And so I wonder if that was even the intention. If they're going to send ba Valkyrie still down here just with the supports. Uh, yeah. I well, think they, that still is, yeah. Yeah, they need to secure the farm on Bowser, um, and obviously after that death as well, they need just the, the supports really, just to, obviously just to support him and, and give him a nice time in lane, because, I mean, Kinesis isn't going to scale well into the late game, neither is Deadwood. The only person that is is Valkyrie, and, and he can only scale well into the late game if he has enough farm, and he just, at the moment he doesn't, so they do need to secure that farm on him. Um, obviously the only problem is now is that they do leave Ravenor to, to create a lot of space for him as, as well, and... It's just, uh, this lane of face for Tree just really hasn't worked out very well, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, Deadwood, you know, he's, you know, lo always look at him to see where he's at in the portal key now. He, he chose to even go on Mystic Vestments here. He, I mean, Power Supply and a bottle, just a lot of buildup, really pushing back that portal key. Uh, you know, so sure he's a little tankier and a little more, uh, or less vulnerable even in the earlier game, but again, he's not going to have the portal key for that much longer now, uh, choosing to go the items that he did, you know, something just simply as a Steam Boots and Bottle into the Portal Key could also be very possible, but yeah, when, when you factor that in, I mean, he basically spent 1,100 extra gold that you can argue he didn't necessarily need to, um, which could have gone towards the Portal Key instead, so we'll see when he is able to get that, if that's uh, going to have the ultimate impact still or not.
Bottom lane. Uh oh, here we go again. Veiled Rock gang coming out. They say Valkyrie Prism. We got Veiled Rock, baby. Valkyrie in a lot of trouble once again. Another face suck stun combo. And down it goes Valkyrie. And dropping a stuns at the last second, but just not nearly in time. And now she might be in trouble herself, actually, as they're going to chase. Yeah, Magmus has another stun. Is he going to get it? Yes, he is. And Path and Parasite here, of course, as well. And Dramata going to fall. Now, can they get out? That's the question. Here come the TPs. Deadwood's here, as well as Kinesis. It looks like, if anything, Parasite going to fall victim as he is caught out. So at least a counter kill for a tree. But that's just slowing down what's a pretty big snowball right now in favor of Coolio mm -hmm. at this point. Yeah. And um, just again, they keep killing the, the Bowser, or keep killing the Valkyrie, which is just really well played from Coolio, knowing exactly who they need to gank and who they, who they need to shut down, because Valkyrie doesn't get far, man. Like I said time and time again, I don't see how they're going to do too well, honestly. Um, I think something that might, what might change up, though, is I just, I think the play style needs to change up, though. Tree needs to stop looking for kills, honestly. Uh, they didn't get, I don't think they got aggressive enough in the laning stage, but they, they definitely need to get aggressive now with the support. So they've got really good heroes to gank with as well. They've got, like, obviously, the Heath Andro, really good range and an area of influence to actually set up, set up kills from afar. Um, obviously, Deadwood and Kinesis are, are good gank partners, even the Valkyrie as well. So they, they need to look for kills because just farming at, at this rate is just not going to get them back to the advantage they need to have yeah. into the mid game. Yeah, th I mean, this is the number one seed going to the blast we're talking about here in Willowkeep, and right now they're 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 struggling against Coolio and what is the loosest bracket finals and on the verge. Uh, you know, obviously a loss in the series. Once again, you're done. Your your season's over. Uh, there is no more for Han Tour season three. So this is a team a lot of people expecting to possibly even get to Thailand, and they may not even get to the next stage with the loss here. But hey, Coolio, the way they're playing right now, they're they're looking strong and would be deserving if they're able to pull through. Now again, mm -hmm. it is still early on. This is game number one. And uh, so plenty of game left even in this one. But uh, this is not going to help things once again. They, they keep doing the same thing, man. It's working out so well. Now, as I say that, Magnus, he did not have a follow-up stun in time. And he ends up falling. Parasite did not get there in time. And this is going to completely fall apart for Kulit. No, they'll get the kill at least on a Deadwood. But they do a wipe. So <laughs> uh, he really needed Parasite to be there a little sooner. <laughs> Unfortunately, he wasn't. And that mm -hmm. caused issues there. So at least some positive news for Tree coming out finally. Yeah, definitely. And just good rotations. I mean, <coughs> three hero kills. Well, one was denied by neutrals, unfortunately. But let's do at least something. Top lane, though, there might be some engagements up here. Yeah, we've got the invulnerability coming out. Kinesis, he's denied at least. He oh does it, Foxy. Timing perfectly. Arrow on a Kraken coming out of the stasis smash. But Kinesis going to oh take a lot of damage. God. Look at that from Ravener with the electrical feedback. Charge onto Valkyrie as well. And now she is forced to leap away. But you see the power of Ravener right there. It's just charges added up. <laughs> he will yep. smack you down with that superior magic damage. So. Yeah, he's already got the Abyssal score now as well. Um, I th think he'll go into uh, like uh, go into portal key instead of the um, thunderclaw this game because it is getting a little more aggressive. For example, and the only way that tree can get back into this game is if they get aggressive and look for kills. And if if Marcus is off farming the map, you know that's not what what Coolio needs. He needs him to get active if tree stop getting active. For example, and portal key's going to help him, whereas the thunderclaw just won't. He can get thunderclaw off the portal key. I think portal key just is a little bit more uh, useful for that. For yeah. Respect. Uh, Kraken right here. He's he's trying. He's he's sitting patiently nearby with uh, with empath inside. But uh, Kinesis, uh, do they have vision over? I don't think that. Yeah, they, they spotted him top, top wood. They spot them from there. Okay, yeah. so they know something's out there. Actually, going to find Magnus to the side, but he stuns away in time. This is a Valkyrie Prism used from our Legion team, but Tree usually so good with that Valkyrie Prism. But again, it's usually played by boxing. It just hate. He keeps saying that oh, about Marcus, but actually they're gonna. Oh, that ref, I don't know. Ref, that ref, what, what, yeah. Okay. So they don't know that they're up there. Yeah. Deadwood was the one that was almost a little troublesome. And oh. actually, Kinesis is gonna run into them now. Kraken. He throws out the charge. He hasn't released the Kraken, but the swap from Andromeda will save the day. Magnus does it though. Kraken. If anything, maybe gonna try to get himself killed. No, he wants to do some more damage here. As Magnus assisting as well, but down goes Kraken. The Falcon punch on a Magnus. He goes down. And so here comes Ravner. The ball line. He misses those shockwave from Z. Another cleanup. This one onto Empath. And now Parasite all of a sudden alone. And Coolio throwing themselves at Willow Keeper in the end. Oh and a God. four for one exchange. So Tree. Oh man, they gotta be feeling pretty good all of a sudden. <laughs> what was just a horrendous start here, frankly. Things are gonna yeah, get a little better. Just, 
It's just the positioning there from Coolio was just terrible. They like they didn't get the initiation they were looking for, like, and then they just went in one after the other, and it just there was just really no sort of team play. Uh, not really great coordination. Ravenel came in late as well, missed his stun. So Tree, yeah, just were definitely throwing a bone right there. And you got to be feeling good about that, and uh, you know you, you look at items that are coming as a result of that. Even Devin now has the portal key. You see Balthazar on his farm. He's sitting about 300 gold per minute right now, so it has been such a struggling start. But finally gaining some bit of momentum himself. Has the Energizer Firebrand most likely in the works here? Um, I, I would assume at least. I mean, you don't know Fireblade again. She she is that kind of hero that could go for that. But if you are being the hard carry, it does seem like the geometers being that route probably makes more sense. Uh, in the long run, but uh, you got Kinesis as well working towards a tablet now, so some some decent items gonna start appearing here uh, in the near future is the idea. But uh, speaking of Portuguese, Magnus and Kraken, of course, already have theirs, and Ravener just bought his as well. So <laughs> you're having to deal against three Portuguese now on the Hellborn side, and Puzzle Box is around the corner now for Parasite. They're once again trying uh, what they've been doing this whole game. It feels like you got Parasite, Magnus, and Empath moving together using Veldrod even, but. This time they're not going to catch anybody, at least yet, as they, uh, a couple of them are going to be spotted by the ward of sight as well here. So, oh, middle lane, Kraken. I mean, again, they saw them rotating over, so Tree very aware. In fact, they wanted to go head on, but that's not going to happen here. Oh, five 5 on both teams really in this middle area right now. <laughs> Look at Coolio. Yeah, they don't want to get picked back. off either, either team. Like if Coolio get one or two, if they get picked off one or two times again, then Tree are going to have the advantage. So... I don't think they can lose the team fight as long as they go together. So they're just looking for team fights. Group up as five. Oh, that's that a second arrow. Though, second Magnus. arrow on Magnus. <laughs> Saving the day somewhat. Uh, might not have mattered in the long run, but uh, at least helps buy a little more time to get away. So there you go. Gonna stay alive as both of them. And at the top lane, Kinesis and Deadwood pushing this in. More so Kinesis, oh. Deadwood hiding, but. Looks like they're gonna try yep. and set up top. They wanna try to get Kinesis now again. Deadwood's here, so. This is, uh, they need to be careful about that. Magma stuns in, and what can Deadwood do? But there's going to be big numbers as well. Valkyrie Prism comes out. Deadwood waiting very patiently. He wants the right target. Ron Grasp is going to come out. They do not have dust, though. That's big. Oh, you man. have to have some kind of vision against them, Valkyrie. They're going to learn their lesson big time. Kraken goes down with the burst, and Kinesis going to TP out as if, as if it ain't no thing. Yeah, you got to have that dust. Magnus, he misses the stun on Deadwood as Deadwood cuts into the trees with that uproot of his. Are clear cutting more so, and he gets away with the portal key. So, guarantee you from here on out, yep. Coolio is going to be carrying dust now. Probably. <laughs> um, really nice play there from Tree. Um, they just use Valkyrie Prism, and then they get the instant turn around kill onto the Kraken there. So, really nice play, and they get out safely as well. So, these couple of little trades have been really in favor of Tree, and they're clawing their way back after a pretty horrible laning stage, honestly. Yeah. I mean, if Coolio want to actually win this, they need to calm down, they should chill out again. Similar to the last game where they were a little bit on tilt after a couple of bad team fights to, to sell their club. So it looks like it's happening here again. They need to sort of calm down uh, and relax. And and really, I, I think when they had that advantage about 6 or 7k, they didn't actually have to try and make any plays. They could have been playing like reactive uh, in that respect because they were so far ahead. It was because they were looking to get kills and looking too aggressive and they sort of overcommitted and um, cost them their lead. But... They're still in the lead at the moment, and they still got, I think, the late game as well. They should just secure farm on Ravenor, and they should be fine. Just yeah. react to anything that Tree do try and do. Yeah, get that farm on Ravenor and make sure that uh, he can be that threat going into the mid and even the late game. That uh, he most certainly can be again, getting those charges added up and whatnot. So he's continuing to farm in the jungle for the time being. Bottom lane, Magnus, he's going to clear it out as Kinesis starts falling back. and. Want to make sure he's fine himself. Again, as far as Valkyrie's farm being played by Balchazar, up a little bit. Still not uh, still not taking off by any means, but about 312 gold per minute here at this point. And does go the Firebrand route, as really expected. Ancients, triple stack Ancients, that is. Let's see if Magmus uses an eruption here or not. He's going to stun in at least. And Parasite also going to come in and assist. Not the strongest AoE here between these three, especially with no eruption use. But eventually going to start working as Volcanic Touch is going to go off. He starts killing them off, so yeah, gonna get some decent farm there again. He already has the portal key, but a little bit more. Nothing uh, nothing bad about more luxury as the game develops. Portal key on Behemoth, that's big. <laughs> Rude of Z has managed to get that at this point, and he's gonna wait patiently at the bottom lane, see if uh, he can catch anybody down here, but as we see, probably not gonna be the case. Puzzle Box is just finished on Parasite, and I think I just saw the tablet purchased by Kinesis in the meantime, so getting a couple of these uh, earlier. Big items for these utility style heroes here. 
at this mm -hmm. point. A Steam Staff on Magma, so the eventual Hellflower going to be in the works here, but starting with the first Arcana, of course. Um, so yeah, I mean, so what, what what should we look for at Ravener here? The Shrunken Head, or I think it'll be um, Thunderclaw, honestly, because uh, this game has been a little bit more passive after the the kind of hellish um, early game. That looks like they're going to be a little bit more um, passive. So I think Thunderclaw will make sense. It'll increase his farming speed and his attack speed, which would be useful. Um, the Shrunken Head is definitely in the works, but I think that might come after. I guess it depends on the playstyle, I guess, as well, or the team leadership. Oh, no, they actually. knew Behemoth was here. Now the charge did not hit him, actually. And that's his saving grace, or will it be? Dust comes out, so they know he's here now. Or they can see him now more, so they knew he was here, of course. And Behemoth is going to be picked off. So, yeah, that was a little interesting start there. I mean, it, something gave them a heads up that he was over here, and eventually they go in and check it out. And sure enough, they were uh, correct on that, of course. So, um, B, I mean, if they want to get aggressive and then sort of take this fight to, to tree, then they should definitely pick up Trunk and Ed, though. But if the if the call is to, you know, try and relax and, and keep on farming, then Thunderclaw will be the pickup here from Revenant. Okay. Well, we'll see what uh, option he does go again. Okay, saving up an amount of gold that uh, going to have that answer in the near future, you'd think. I mean, I, I think if the best decision, though, would, I think would, would, would be Thunderclaw, I'd say, because the game has been a little bit more passive, and he can go strong ahead afterwards as well. Um, but just trying to force the issue as of right now, I mean, they can't do too much, though, because I think it's just they don't have the big enough lead to, to really force um, things. So strong ahead might not be the best choice, but it, it's definitely needed, though. It, pretty much everything is, is, is stopped by strong ahead outside of the Deadwood always, so it would definitely be a, a need to pick up here, though. But yeah. Not of right now. You saw the middle in there pushing a little bit, but decided to fall back. Behemoth looking for another opportunity. This time he's in the middle area. And again, so good to go. And you know when they when they caught him over there, so that that is a little bit unfortunate too, because not only do they kill Behemoth, but no more surprise portal, portal key <laughs> going to be coming out from Behemoth here. They're obviously very aware at this point, so keeping that in mind as they're pushing and grouping up and whatnot. Valkyrie has the mighty blade now. Again, whether that's going to be a Frostbird or. Uh, a shrunken head herself, we'll have to wait and see. The Valkyrie Prism use right there. I don't know, though, if that's going to... Are they going to try... Yeah, okay, they are going to go middle here. I don't know if they were seen to be honest. I think this actually might be a pretty good one for an attempt, but... Oh, they're going to get Empath. <laughs> here comes the damage, and boom goes the Dynamite. So, easy kill on Adro. A couple of TPs coming in. Rabbit are going to try to catch somebody. Ooh, just out of range of Andromeda, but Magma stunts in. They do not want to let this end quickly. Or easy, I should say. And down goes Andromeda, actually. A little curious about that. Actually, Parasite didn't get the buff from Andromeda with the face hug. And I, I, I assume that that should be a buff, to be honest, with the Void Rip. But for some it reason, he didn't get it. Might just be a self-state, actually. I kind guess, of yeah. Similar to... Um, what would be similar, similar to maybe like Ravenor's power overwhelming? I think it's a self-state buff. Yeah. I don't think it should be, personally. I'm going to talk to Waz about that. Damn it. Yeah. Have to make some changes. No, it's really not a big deal, but <laughs> uh, obviously they got the kill. That's what matters. Good swap, though, from Andromeda to save uh, Behemoth, at least. Some teammate right there, and, of course, the powerful tool of it. The puzzle box is now level 2. It has level 1 still on it, but I think level 2 being delivered. Or, no, never mind, not on the courier, so maybe I just uh, saw something different. Uh, Soul's Bulwark on Deadwood here. Increasing his damage output. Um, as far as uh, crack is involvement, you know, 5, 2, and 5, so pretty respectable, actually. And 26 minutes in, involved, to say the least. 16 to 13 hero kills overall in favor of uh, Coolio here. So still remains, and, you know, again, Shree got to a point where they were starting to really climb back into it, and getting the, the gap was very close, but Coolio has slowly but surely increased it once again. 4,500 gold lead oh, middle mid lane. You see this could help things as well. Dell would be jumped on here, and Drama trying to get a swap off. She gets it off in time. Barely in time, but she does, and Deadwood is going to portal key away. I can see her. She was Ooh. struggling to get there. They do lose the tower still. Yeah, that's unfortunate. So really not the biggest deal in the world for Tree. Yeah, these Android shops are making a big difference, though, because if these cores are dying, then they're really going to be lackluster in, in going into the mid and late game. But I have to admit, these uh, Android shops are doing good. I guess the, the pick was definitely worthwhile after, uh, in the draft. Yeah. Yeah, proving to be... Uh Worthwhile pickup, definitely. I mean, look at the hero kill set. Four, seven, and six. That's a, quite the stat line there for Andromeda. Uh, has a <laughs> bit of death as well, but obviously it's been just overall very involved in this game, both in the positive and the negative. So 
That's how she works, though. Again, the, uh, the the change to her. It was it was it was a definitely a really cool scene, and, and we have seen on in several instances. Maybe not this game, but that buff coming into play with the uh, with the armor that you get now. The thirty up to fifty it's armor at level fine. three uh, mm -hmm. pretty much makes her not not obviously invulnerable, but it really makes her difficult to to kill, even though she swaps in at that point. Yeah. So middle tower, though, easy kill for Coolio here. <laughs> So Shrunken Edit is picked up from Ravenon then, so they do want to just force the team fights and just go cutthroat almost for, for Tree, which is, which is a viable strategy as well. Um, makes sense. I mean, what, what, can, what Tree don't really have any answers to the Shrunken Edit from Ravenor, honestly, outside of maybe the Deadwood Punch, but even then I, I don't think it's going to be enough. He's got Abyssal Skull himself, so pretty tanky in terms of raw armor as well. So it's just whether Tree can... Oh, almost, but they can't. They can't really ignore the revenue. So I guess they just they have to try not to team fight. But they don't have the greatest of split push, pushing kind of heroes. So, well, another pause here. Unfortunately, <laughs> apparently. Uh, all right, I hate it when players jump to that conclusion. To be honest, but hey, he's lagging. All right, he's lagging. Every time somebody lags, doesn't mean they're getting DDoSed. <laughs> Oh yes, he's lagging. So hopefully he can get that sorted out, though. And uh, reconnect it here. And good to go and resume it on, because obviously that's the last thing you want when a series, especially, that's going so well so far. Coolio, definitely the underdog's coming into this, but right now, continue to be in the lead, as you mentioned, the shrunken head on, on Ravener. So see if they get involved in fights with it or not here now. At this point, it's currently still up at the top area in the jungle. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, with the uh, with the Shrunken Dead now, Ravenor should be the one sort of initiating the fights as well, to be fair, because if he portal keys in, stuns someone down, um, and pops Shrunken Dead, there's nothing that, that Tree can do. Um, they can't really blow anything up. And, and with, if Ravenor has enough sort of charges, or with max charges, he's going to blow up anyone just with the, with the two Q and W combo. So um, and then I think uh, Coolio will just have to back him up if Deadwood goes in, like the Magnus and Kraken will have to back uh, Ravenor up if, if Crack A counter initiates, for example. So, okay, it looks like they should be good to go here. Tree just uh, needs to give their go-ahead, and there we go. So, oh, okay. Um, again, Valkyrie has continued to develop herself, another Frostburn. So it really just continues to be a game for Balthazar of, uh, you know, oh, that's un Did she use a Valkyrie Prism? I, I thought she did, actually, but they're not uh, affected by it. Oh, that was from before the pause. Never mind. Uh, that was used a little bit ago. So uh, not going to be able to get anything with it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, getting the point, going back to again, this is not really the hard, hard carry, the flash farming kind of carry that we're used to seeing Balthazar on. And, and it, it's definitely continuing to show, you know, only 345 gold per minute even. And now that he's been able to get some consistent farm. But uh, still, you know, good mobile carry as far as the later game picks up. And going to try to take their best advantage of that. It gets her level 3 Valkyrie Prism as well, which, you know, it's... It's not the the biggest ultimate upgrade, but it's still 20 second less cooldown on that prism. So can now use that a little more frequently. And again, Tree definitely a team that likes to use that ability. Uh, I think that I, I believe that is still level two puzzle box that actually finally got delivered to Parasite here. So so let me see at the level three, but at least has a level two at this point. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't look like Coolio is doing a whole lot of getting aggressive just yet. Still insisting on a. Playing it pretty safe here, just as Tree is for that matter. But Maybe they're waiting for the Hellfire from Magnus, I guess, but. Yeah. Could be the thing. It would be the useful initiation tool, because then Ravenon won't have to jump in. Um, you can get Magnus to jump in with Hellfire, and then Ravenon and Kraken could just follow up. <laughs> you know, this is kind of hitting me here, too. You know, Super KG really hasn't had the most impactful game this year. It's honestly it's like the first Kraken, time. For I think Coolio. it's just him playing Kraken, though. It's not. It's not a Magmus, it's not a Deadwood kind of thing. Deadwood and Magmus can sort of set up um, almost sort of solo kills, whereas Kraken like, needs Portal Key before he can kind of do that. And it doesn't feel a Super KG S kind of hero. Yeah. Like, he still plays a good Kraken, but um, if I think of KG, I think of more the more flashy playmakers. And Kraken can be a playmaker, but more he's sort of a team fighter kind of thing. So. It goes back to, again, the, the, the charge. And, you know, he's amongst many of the players that. Uh, so every now and then, you know, it's, again, it's not the easiest ability to land. I mean, we know this, and you know, I've seen it many times. So uh, for whatever the reason, yeah, it hasn't been the most effective weapon. He's running uphill right here into a Kinesis. 
They're going to look to turn with some burst damage. Andromeda, the Aurora comes out, but no, Kinesis instead going to start falling back, actually. <laughs> Just going to leave the trees floating in the air. Uh, uh, Behemoth is nearby as well, but Valkyrie down here, she's kind of far away from her teammates. However, Andromeda gets picked off. Here comes Deadwood, though, on a parasite. Behemoth jumps in. He gets caught immediately, though. He finally gets shockwave off, but minimal units nearby, and he goes down. Magnus, eh, not going to get close enough. The eruption really not doing a whole lot of damage right there, but Foxy's still caught enough as Super KGE does him in right there with the charge to finish him off. So definitely a one fight for Coolio, a three for one exchange. Only lose yep, the Parasite they could there. Do they could do Congo now as well. They've got a bit of skull and Revenant. I think that's what they should do. But they're sort of waiting a little bit. Are they running? Oh, no. It looks like they're just trying to keep on. They can do Congo right now if they want to, but perhaps don't want to risk it. Perhaps. I don't know. It's strange, strange. But and regardless, the, the Shrunken Head from Revenant is, is doing a lot of work. They did have pretty a little bit of initiation. I think they caught Tree just a little bit off, off guard. But you saw them here do, do absolutely nothing. So they're Revenant and Revenant just cutting through everything that Tree has to offer. You got uh, Kraken right here roaming about. He has a haste room bottled up, actually. Going to pop it right here and let's see if he can make anything of it. Perhaps at this top lane, Deadwood, if he keeps going a little bit further. And uh, now he's doing some item switching right here. So he was caught a, a little bit uh, microing, yeah. but in the end, he's going to be fine. I'm surprised, actually, Super KG went Souls Bulwark this game. Uh, well, uh, not this game, but more so before Shrunken Ed. I think Shrunken Ed would pretty much win them the team fight, similar to what Revenant's doing as well. And also, like, Soul's Bulwark can be picked up by Parasite, so it's not 100% needed on Kraken, but getting it here, I guess. Yeah, I true. just think if, if like, he'll gonna, he's going to go Shrunken Head anyway, and picking it up right now just means he won't die. <laughs> Andromeda <laughs> got spotted, availed Rot, tried to go for the TP, and obviously that wasn't going to happen, so good find right there. But, uh, yeah, choosing not to go the Shrunken Head, though, with that Soul's Bulwark pickup. Uh, insisting on uh, finishing that at full, perhaps. With the demonic even. Hellflower, though, is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, okay, he's just about there. I think he needs one more uh, one more of these Arcanas, 5075. Yeah, so now he has it right here. So, going to be finishing up the Hellflower. And again, that's going to be a good timing as well. Another 2,000 gold for Ravener. Marcus Moy, another 415, or farming 415 gold per minute here. And, and again, you also got to keep in mind he's, he's constantly having empath inside him in these fights as well. And already a hero that's pretty quick, especially once he gets those charges added up and throwing empath inside, that's just that much stronger. So, by all means, uh, one of uh, well, many heroes that really takes advantage of that empath and being a teammate of his. So, this tree definitely has their work cut out for them. In fact, I think this is the biggest deficit we've seen so far, honestly. And nearly an 8,000 gold and a 9,500 experience lead right now. Valkyrie Prison, but they were right on top of a ward of sight. <laughs> Literally on top of it. And now, I'm a little surprised they're not playing this a little more passive. Now they have a red one as well, charged in from Kraken. On there with a swap as well as a Talbot, saving the day. There's the initiative on the Behemoth, though. He goes down immediately without doing anything. Magnus comes in as a uh, Ravner also chasing out with that Shrunken Head up. He wants, he's not sure who he wants to go for. He's kind of running around, honestly. And Ravener now taking some good damage. Willowmaker in his face. He goes down, actually. Super KG now Kraken by himself. Valkyrie with a split up the Geometer's Bane. And down goes Kraken. Parasite off to the side on those roller, uh, roller plates right there. D2's going to fall. Down goes Empath. And it basically was a gentle side. Ravener fought back, but he could not get here in time. I guess it will protect a Congo, if anything. But, mm, man. I don't know if he would even protect that, I guess. But, um, yeah. It was just... Really, really, really poor the initiation there from from Coolio. Like they they jumped on. I think it was the Kinesis, but he just tabletted away from Kraken initiation, and then the Shrine was used kind of a little bit prematurely from from Ravenor, and then they just Deadwood punched him in the face, and just got, the team fight was really dis disjointed and and uh, a little bit chaotic, really. Like Coolio are the ones with the sort of the big AOE uh, team fights. Like they've got, they've got the Kraken ulti, the Magnus ulti, all that want to sort of clump up and, and farm. And tree that they kind of want these disjointed team fights. I guess Kinesis and Behemoth have good AOE, but with the strong edge from from Marcus, they they want as many chaotic fights as possible. Like the little small engagements and skirmishes really do benefit Tree uh, compared to Coolio right there. And I'm just going back to that strong and Kraken though. Like if he had that one there, he he would be perfectly fine. But with the Souls Bulwark, it's just it's not offering enough. He is making his way towards one now, but. Just, uh, not as effective as what you could have had. Earlier, yeah, and I'd be really curious to see like almost like a, a, a fight breakdown of like the damage dealt in that fight specifically because I feel like Ravener basically was useless in yeah. that fight because when he, by the time he got in, it, I don't know if it was just because he wasn't sure who he wanted to target or they were just constantly splitting to make it very difficult, but he was just running around almost 
Uh, and I think he maybe got like two auto attacks off that whole fight, honestly. And that, that obviously just cannot happen if you want to win these fights here, if you're if you're Coolio. So um, just nothing really coming together in that fight. It all started with the poor initiation, as you pointed out. And and uh, we'll see if Coolio now is you know, going to fine-tune that here moving on. But, you know, I just got finished saying how they – I think they had their biggest lead going into that fight, and all of a sudden now it's back to only a 3,300 goal lead and now only a 2,000 experience lead even. As Tree is climbing back in. Look at the build of Balthazar, actually. He, of course, has the Geometer's Man, and now he's got the Frostal Skull here. So he's got the combo of those items in the works, at least. We're going to have the Frost with the follow now. Yeah, so he's not going to be the most hardest-hitting hero right here, but uh, going to be some good assistance. And So they are going to be relying a lot on the continue to be what will be the magic damage, specifically from <laughs> Kinesis and even Behemoth here. Um, and, of course, Dev would also, you know, with the physical presence uh, of the in-between. Mm -hmm. So... But yeah, Valkyrie most yeah. certainly not that hard carry as we expected. Not yet, anyway. Uh, she can be with six six load, but she's just building up tanky at the moment, which I think is the right call to make. She doesn't want to get bursted down by all the sort of bursts that Coolio have. Uh, looks like Coolio maybe going to try and sneak a Roche, perhaps. Maybe. Yeah, that would be something. I mean, <laughs> they're going to try. Now this ward aside, I'm pretty sure gives enough information that something's going on. Uh, which, uh, yeah, you can see by Willow, oh, they're kind of moving over. Now, there's a lot of wards, man, from Rev Wars to Ward of Sights in this area. So, from both sides even, it, it's going to be uh, quite the war at this area. As far as uh, being being a little careful when you push up. Neither team is a to die, I don't think. No. No. I, I don't know whether Akulia are wanting to... I think Akulia maybe should try and wait to the Shrunken End on Kraken, honestly, but then I guess that does allow time for Valkyrie to get a Frostwolf Skull, and she's going to be very, very tanky then. Shrunken End's already picked up by Deadwood as well, so... Yeah, uh, uh, Akulia just... I think with them not being, obviously, that of an experienced team together, mm -hmm. the synergy's a little it bit... Filled rot. Poor, for example. That was a beautiful filled rot right there I, at... Uh-oh, Ravener? I don't know he's there, necessarily. But the Veil to Rot, now they're going to be exposed. They jump around until they saw him immediately. In comes a burst from Kinesis. Not the biggest, though. The follow-up for Devil. He's like, I got burst. Don't worry. Magnus comes in with a kind of eruption, however. And it looks like Coolio's looking pretty good all of a sudden. Kinesis going to be bursting out himself. And now Deadwood and Valkyrie left alone. Parasite, he's low on life. He has Empath inside currently. They're going to chase down Valkyrie. The stun for Magnus. And down goes Valkyrie. Ravener did buy back, by the way. That is his second and final buyback. Very so. premature. Yeah, very, very premature because they cleaned them up. Now they are going to get Congor with this, but again, I still think they could have got it without Ravener. Yeah, definitely. So. That's just that's just Marcus just being too too yolo or too ecstatic kind of thing in terms of like whether he's buy back or not. Like I remember he did that the last time. I can't remember if it was in the playoffs, but he yeah, I think it was against the playoffs. It was against Tree actually <laughs> uh, with with Clanks. So like he pulled back really really early and it's yeah. it sort of it's not needed kind of thing. And, well, um, okay. I mean, even so, even with that, they can't even secure a Congor kill. Has yeah, too much scare. Obviously, a couple of buybacks here on Tree, specifically Kinesis and yep. Valkyrie. So that's really big, actually, right now, because now Ravenor does not have a buyback yeah. um, anymore. So any big pickoffs, for example, on Ravenor could could even secure Rax at this point in time. And uh, that's just honestly, that's just a, a big misplay. I'm just going to call it right there. Did not need to do it, but I guess that could come down from maybe lack of communication as yeah. well. Like people should say, don't don't buy back. Kind of thing, buy well, back. it's tough. Again, you hear the mo. Obviously, the, if it wasn't for that big Magmus eruption, I mean, that fight could have been much different. So, in his mind, he died. He died right off the bat. Obviously, he was the first target they found. They yeah. killed. They bursted him pretty quickly. So he just figured, you know, I'm gonna buy back immediately and be there. But just so happened that his team ended up waiting for him. Now, Veiled Rot. They're gonna counter with their own Veiled Rot right here. Valkyrie gonna be collapsed on. They gotta jump quickly. They finally will. And now Valkyrie being locked down. That tab is pushing over the ledge. Now, can he? First comes out, Valkyrie leaps away. She's going to survive. <laughs> that fissure stun caused a lot of issues right there for Coolio. And they have to deal with the arrow coming in. Five second arrow on a Kraken. Going to try to help save Kinesis the most he can. He's absorbing a lot of damage because of what he put out earlier. But now he's going to get caught out, locked down. Very likely killed off. Another fissure stun. Maybe not. Kinesis, that shield, man. He absorbs plenty of damage, but just not enough when it's all said and done. This game... This continues to be that back and forth uh, stage now at this point. So uh, Valkyrie lived, but at least they kill. Are they going to try Congor again? Uh, I mean, the third time's a charm here, right? they they got to be able to kill this time. No, never mind. They're not even going to try for it. So yeah, A lot was used to be fair. And they're uh, quite low on HP and mana. So yeah. But 
Yeah, this game is really tense right around the moment because I think with with Kudio's lead they had, it was like nine, ten thousand. Like, you know, as long as they played it safe and chill, you know, relax a little bit, I think they had that get they had the game. But with them just like said, being a little bit of an experienced team, a little bit hot headedness has um, it's really got Tree back into it. And now with no buyback on Ravenor, this game is really close, and yeah, it could go either way, honestly. Yeah. It sure can. It, it, it really, this is, again, this is the loser's bracket finals. We keep stressing what is on the line here. This is just game one, but game one of a very important best of the three series for both of these teams. Willow Keeper, a team that has constantly been at the top tier for basically the whole regular season. They finish with the number two overall seed behind Sink Esports, the number one going into the playoffs, of course. And here they are matched up against a team in Coolio has just, who's just been constantly going through roster changes throughout the season, including into these playoffs. And right now, Coolio continues to have the advantage in game number one. But no doubt, Trees had their shining moments, and this might be another one right here. The Valkyrie Prism can't crack it, has no clue. He charges, he hits Deadwood. But here comes the TPs, actually. So all of a sudden, Tree, he's just on big shockwave oh. from Behemoth on the TP So And down go Magnus and Empath right off the bat. Ravener jumps to the rock grasp, and now he's in a lot of trouble. He gets locked up by the comments done, and Willow Keeper going to come out on top big time of this fight. They get the tower kill. What a play by Root of Z in the <laughs> what background. What a play, man. That was insane. I mean, we always think about don't TP into like an engineer, but the same goes for Behemoth as well. But what a play from Root of Z. They completely turned the team fight. And um, I mean, I think I might even secure Rax right now. Ravenor does not have a buyback, and, and neither does Magmus at the moment. I mean, what's stopping Tree from going Rax right now? Yeah. I don't think anything is. And <laughs> Ravenor using the two buybacks, man. That's going to. Yeah, it's going to cost them here, no doubt. It's not a hindsight deal. I'm definitely pointing out, even after the first buyback, let alone the second buyback, that it really was questionable. So here we go, the tower. It's dropping quickly. You know, I will say this much, too. Boy, am I glad Behemoth is back in the competitive scene once again. He's a fun hero to cast and making big plays like that. But, uh, yeah, Root of Z doing his best Behemoth plays there. And they're going to clean up the tops of the racks, as you said. It's just nothing that Coolio can do at that time. Uh, Super KG was counter pushing the middle in a little bit the best that he can, but you can see they're going to backdoor this middle tower. They don't need no stinking creeps uh, to take it out right here. Ravener still has 10 more seconds before he's up, and trying to commit to a fight before Ravener's up would be pretty costly if you're Coolio. So they decide not to. Good play by, uh, by Willowkeeper as a team right here, and they're going to fall back from that. So for the first time this game, they actually have a gold lead and, you know, starting to build that up yep. now. Definitely. And um, now they've got a you know, decent farm of Valkyrie now as well. He's like 442. It's completely leapfrogged Ravenor in terms of farm. And if you think of Ravenor, like, he he hasn't had any item progression. He had he bought the Shrunken Head at like 25 minutes, it felt like. And for the last 20 minutes with the two buybacks, just hasn't been able to farm it. And that really has cost them. Really, really has. Because he's the one dishing out all this damage. But without, you know, the progression of items, just it seemed a little bit lackluster in these team fights. Yeah. So. Sheepstick now picked up. Yeah, that, that really is the biggest thing. Sheepstick picked up on uh, Kinesis, by the way. But uh, about how Ravner and the buybacks. Yeah, it's one thing to not have buybacks going forward, but exactly the gold that he spent to do that has just taken away from the progression. Exactly, and uh, you definitely feel that here. I mean, sure, he's 367 gold per minute, which honestly, right now, of course, isn't even that impressive. But uh, his items still are very lacking as we're now 43 minutes into this game, and you know, neither team was really the most threatening late game team. Team, to be fair. Uh, both of them, uh, you know, get, you had Valkyrie over here as a hard carry in a sense for the Legion side, which she's not necessarily up there on the list of hard carries. But, you know, Ravener, kind of the same story to an extent. I know there's the idea that, sure, he, he can be very scary. But, yeah, in my mind, still not like that Dark Lady or anything like that. But um, the bottom second, the bottom first tower, though, is still going to go down in favor of Tree. But it just goes back to that. So neither team really couldn't necessarily take advantage of that. It's just more so play going into it and the lead that they have. And right now it is in favor of Willowkeeper now. As you say that, nice Aurora scout right there. Actually spots Parasite. Kraken jumps in. I don't know what he's thinking, though. He's completely by himself. That was just silly. Super KG getting desperate <laughs> and gets yep. nothing of it in the end. So, Coolio feel like they're on tilt, to be honest. Like they had, I mean, I think they had this game, honestly. 10,000 gold lead ahead. Um, they had the better late game as well, um, but they just gave Tree ways to get back into this game because just Coolio just maybe just a little bit hot-headed. Yeah. And um, hopefully they'll be able to really recover in, in game two. But in a game that felt almost so won, 
it's uh, definitely hard to do uh, so. Yeah, and again, it's it's got to it's got to be a bad feeling, you know. No money in this tournament has, in the end, but uh, the, the the trip to Thailand ultimately on the line, and knowing that you were ahead of what was the number one seed in these playoffs in the first game at least, yep. and you, in a sense, you you thrown it in certain cases, and you know you haven't made the best decisions at times, and. Only yourselves to blame, really. I feel like we've been saying that a lot about Tree lately, honestly. <laughs> How yep. other teams going against them is what I meant by that. So, like, Tree happens to be the yeah, team that they take advantage of those mistakes, though. So. Yeah, we're seeing another case of that right here. Behemoth? He's in a tight spot right now. As Magnus, <laughs> he didn't even realize Behemoth was going to be there, and all of a sudden he finds him, and that ends up being a quick kill. So, well, something there, at least. You got to be happy with that. They, do you see the Thunderclaw on Ravener, by the way? Mm -hmm. yeah, so well, really. not, that's going to be quite good actually, pushing out top lane. They have way to creep clear now, so at least the top lane won't be too big of a deal. I'll have to make sure that Ravenoir keeps on um, clearing up the waves top lane, otherwise that can be a little bit of a um, hard thing to deal with, for example. Uh, Kraken does have his stronger head now as well. The only problem is that the farm now on trees is rather insurmountable. You've got stronger head as well as Demonic Breastplate on, on Deadwood now doing a lot of work. Not only that, Valkyrie's becoming that right-click presence. She's got the Frost oh, off yeah. the Geo, so now she's most likely breaking her way into the wing bow as well, because Ravenel isn't really a natural Savage Mace handler, because obviously a lot of his damage comes from his ultimate, not from his right-clicks. So. Um, I mean, he can definitely go it, but it's just not one of those normal carry heroes to go it. Yeah, similar to like a Gemini. Like, Gemma doesn't really want to pick up a Savage Mace, but sometimes can, for example. But uh, So yeah, the wing bow will be good here for Valkyrie. Um, and uh, yeah, Super Sig on, on Kinesis as well. All useful support items to, to take team fights in the late game, but yeah, I mean, if Coolio are going to take this game, I, I think they're going to have to get maybe a little bit creative in terms of their pickoffs um, and play a little bit risky. Mm -hmm. It's what cost them, honestly, this game playing a little bit risky. But when you're behind, I think that's the the, the name of the game. There's that wing will finish on Valkyrie in pretty good timing because here we go with the five-man push from Willowkeeper. But, uh, hey, this game's not over yet. Definitely a big initiation. Oh, the arrow! Oh, just missed. An invis parasite, actually, at that time and uh, coming out right here. But it's uh, it's going to come down to who gets the better jump. You see the failed rot once again by Tree. They love this item and making sure that uh, – they're not spotted out. As I say that, they are going to be spotted out. Kinesis, but a quick oh, sheep stick no. on a Ravener. Here comes the counterplay. He can't get the stronger knife off just yet. Willowmaker comes out. Complete locked on him. He finally gets it off. He's putting out some damage to it. What he can. He is still alive. Will he die at the end? Yes, he will. Valkyrie putting in the right clicks, and that is showing off. So all of a sudden, three players tonight. Mavis comes in with the eruption. Kinesis will fall. Valkyrie, though, chasing down. Now, she is out of mana, but again, you see the right clicks. Magnus cannot do much more, but then just watch his teammate die as a quad kill comes out for Valkyrie. And she's going to look to try to finish the job right here. Magnus does it on a dead one. Not going to be enough. There's a sheep stick. Is she going to get it? Yes, she is. Balthazar with the annihilation. And the genocide is official in favor of Willowkeeper. And there's the GG well played coming out from Coolio. Game one goes to Damn. Tree. Damn. Damn. Simply. Um, Coolio were looking very, very good in the lane stage. Um, they held out very well in the top lane. Arch Tiger really kept him in it in terms of um, the ganks from Parasite to really shut down the aggressive try land from Tree, and they got a big advantage, but just threw it away, unfortunately, because of a couple of bad team fights there, and uh, their just whole team positioning just was a little bit poor, but it, I guess it just goes back from the, the leadership style of things with, with Coolio. I think the only way they could really win games is if they outplay Tree uh, significantly. They were doing that in the landing phase, but when it got into the more sort of strategic thing, the uh, the lack of experience and the lack of practice, I think really came to came to the limelight. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got to be frustrating for Coolio, but uh, again, keeping that composure, will they be able to going into the second game? Because you definitely have to against a team like Tree, or else uh, they could just roll over you and uh, in the blink of an eye before you know it could be over. So. Again, if you look back at the last series, uh, the, they met on Tuesday in what was the winner bracket uh, round of four at the time. Uh, it did go three games, and that was because Coolio came back in the second game to ultimately force that third and final game.